So in order to understand the effects of uh, positive pressure ventilation on the pulmonary circulation and the left cardiac chambers, we have this diagram where we are depicting the uh, heart inside the uh, thoracic cavity. And we have here the left ventricle, the left atrium, pulmonary veins, and aorta. We are assuming that during mechanical breath, the intrapleural pressure or the intrathoracic pressure goes up to 10 millimeter mercury. And what will happen is during this breath, that pressure is going to be squeezing on the pulmonary veins and it will lead to increased venous return. This happens in early inspiration and later the venous return will go down as a result of decreased stroke volume of the right ventricle during inspiration. It will take two to three heartbeats before this effect is seen on, uh, on the left side. The second effect is the transmural pressure. And we are assuming that we have intraventricular pressure of 90 millimeter mercury. With this intrathoracic pressure of 10, 10 millimeter mercury, the transmural pressure will be 90 minus 10 that will give us lower transmural pressure than if uh, the intrathoracic pressure was zero. So that is uh, decreased tension on the left ventricle or in other words, decreased afterload. The third effect of mechanical ventilation on the uh, uh, work of the heart is through the difference between intrathoracic uh, pressure and extrathoracic pressure within the circulatory system. So we have a pressure inside the aorta of 90. However, we have additional 10 millimeter mercury from outside. This will give us a pressure of 100. And the pressure outside is 90 millimeter mercury that will create a gradient between the intrathoracic aortic pressure of 90 plus 10 minus the extrathoracic circulatory system pressure. This difference of 10 millimeter mercury will be helping out in decreasing the afterload on the heart. So the effects can be summarized. In number one, we have an increased left ventricular preload in early inspiration. Number two, we have a decreased afterload and wall tension. And number three, we have a decreased afterload because of the pressure gradient difference. And in these graphs, we will see the uh, uh, effects on the left side over time. Let's explain this one by one. And the first one is the mechanical breath. This is pressure over time where at the initiation of inspiration, the pressure goes up to the peak inspiratory pressure before it uh, plateaus and remains at this plateau level for the duration of inspiration. At the beginning of expiration, the pressure goes back to the PEEP level. And the second graph shows the effects uh, of the positive intrathoracic pressure on pulmonary vessels. This curve represents the pulmonary vein flow and you can see that uh, with initiation of inspiration and the positive pressure uh, inside the chest, uh, the flow goes up as a result of uh, the squeezing effect on the pulmonary veins. Uh, and then after it goes up, uh, it starts to go down gradually as a result of the uh, decreased uh, right ventricular output. Uh, this will lead to a decrease in the flow in the pulmonary veins. However, it will take uh, at least two to three uh, heartbeats to reach uh, the left side. Uh, this may be uh, at the end of inspiration or it may be delayed further uh, during expiration. Uh, it really depends on the uh, flow through the pulmonary vessels. The third graph here represents the effects on the left ventricle 
you uh, see here the first one is the left ventricle stroke volume the second one is the left ventricle afterload and the third one is the left ventricle preload the uh, left ventricle preload is similar to the uh, pulmonary vein flow where uh, you see that uh, the preload is increased in early inspiration however in late inspiration it will go down lower the afterload is decreased as a result of the gradient between intrathoracic and extrathoracic structures in addition to the decreased transmural pressure and tension on the ventricular wall this decreased afterload is remained throughout inspiration as a result of these two effects here the stroke volume will be higher in early inspiration however the decreased preload is dominating in late inspiration and the final effect would be a decreased left ventricular stroke volume at end of inspiration the fourth graph here represents what's happening on the blood pressure as a result of the increased stroke volume in early inspiration the systolic blood pressure would be at its highest point and the uh, pulse pressure would be the greatest however at end of inspiration the blood pressure would be at the lowest point and the pulse pressure will be the smallest with the start of expiration that blood pressure goes up back as a result of increased uh, venous return from the right side and I want to emphasize again that these changes uh, do not necessarily have to be at the end of uh, inspiration it really depends on how fast the blood would move from the right side to the left side it may be earlier or maybe later and in summary the changes of the positive pressure ventilation on the uh, left side of the heart uh, can be summarized by an increased uh, venous return or increased uh, preload, decreased uh, afterload and decreased uh, left ventricular uh, tension thank you